Bueno, bienvenidos a esta sesión eh, de la tarde del, del 16 Congreso, doctor Antonio Monteiro. Eh, en esta ocasión vamos a tener una ponencia del doctor Mauricio Godoy Molina, que se desempeña como profesor en la Universidad de la Frontera, en Temuco, en Chile. Eh, la presentación va a ser en inglés, yo estoy diciendo esto en castellano para que quede. Eh, si quieren hacer preguntas durante eh, la ponencia, él ha dicho que no tiene problema. Eh, las quieren hacer en inglés o en castellano, está bien. Y si no, pueden escribir por el chat y yo se las voy a transmitir. El título de la charla es On Infinitesimal Symmetries of Distributions. Así que sin más, te cedo la palabra. Muchísimas gracias en nombre de la organización por aceptar. Gracias. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm very honored to be here uh, giving this talk. Um, so I will, um, I will focus mostly. I, I, I think uh, you can see my, my screen, right? Yeah. Um, so I will uh, mostly uh, deal with um, work that I have done over the years. I will make historical remarks. There are some very important, uh, very important theorems that have been proved, and, and that you can uh, in very ancient times, and that you can reformulate uh, in a more modern language. This is a mixture between. Uh, Algebraic, uh, algebraic tools like Lie algebras and stuff like that, uh, purely algebraic tools and uh, differential geometric tools. So uh, this is fairly usual, but uh, I don't think uh, it is standard knowledge that we typically have in, 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 at least in Latin America. I don't think it's very frequent to have this mixture in this way. So I will, <coughs> uh, I will first give an overview of the notion of local symmetry. I will uh, make some comments about some important examples, some little, a little bit of history. Um, then I will go to more Lie algebraic, fact, Lie algebraic facts, uh, some results that I have obtained with co-authors in recent years, uh, some current work. And finally, that this is a bit more technical, but in a sense, it's, uh, how to say, uh, okay, it is a lot more technical, okay? It's a lot more technical, but uh, the motivation, it's very nice. It's a very beautiful problem that, uh, so on, on the second problem, I'm working with a PhD student and on the third problem as well, yeah? In a generalizations of these. So uh, the rolling problem is about rolling stuff, okay? Anyway, uh, <clears throat> let me go with the, with the definition with some, first of all, some motivation, then, then I will define precisely. The, in uh, control theory, uh, there are problems that you can pose geometrically, okay? Um, what do I mean by that? I mean that um, sometimes you can write down a mechanical system that, that it's being controlled, by using a configuration space and uh, restrictions on the velocities. And that restriction should be a distribution, namely a sub bundle of the tangent bundle of the configuration manifold. Okay. Uh, <coughs> this, is very, this is very common. Okay. It, at least for pure mathematicians uh, that you just grab your real world problem or well, at least a toy model of a real world problem. And then you write it down as a, as an abstract object, hoping that when you make it abstract, it will work better somehow, okay? So here I have a, a very famous example. Um, I, I always like to talk about, to, to, to tell, I don't know, school students, uh, engineering students, that even uh, parking a car can be, you know, sophisticated, mathematically speaking. And um, the, the, the second part of the joke is that I don't know how to drive, okay? So th this is purely, this is truly purely theoretical. Um, <clears throat> and so you, uh, I think I, 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 we tried it before, I think I can draw. And so what I'm thinking about here is that uh, I have on the plane, on the X, Y plane, I draw a little car, okay? And uh, okay, maybe, maybe you can move it to the side, uh, and I'm driving this car, and uh, well, no, not me, <laughs> it 
someone is driving the car. And so you are using uh, coordinates X, Y to denote the center of the car. And also the car could, you know, uh, rotate. And so you are also adding uh, an angle variable theta with respect to the horizontal in case you are rotating the car. It's an ideal car. You're not assuming anything but uh, moving on the, on the plane and also rotating. And uh, so basically you have uh, three, a three-dimensional parameter space. So this configuration space is three-dimensional. It's uh, the plane times S1. Uh, which is basically a solid tori, uh, and um, a torus, sorry. And um, <clears throat> you just write down the control system, namely you can, you can move, you, you, you are uh, allowed to you know, accelerate backwards and forwards in the direction of the main axis of the car. And that will give you these two differential equations. And you can also move the steering wheel and so you can rotate the car. So you have two controls on a three-dimensional parameter space or configuration space. And that is sophisticated to imagine for most uh, undergraduates, probably the graduates are more familiar with this, but you can, you can reach states using fewer parameters, just doing things in a clever way. In fact, uh, an easy way to see that uh, this is happening with a, with, a car, with a car problem is that if you have two cars that are parked, uh, so this is the sidewalk, and you are driving a car and you are here and you want to parallel park. And for most cars, you cannot do this motion. That is completely forbidden, right? Now there are modern cars that can rotate the wheels 90 degrees, okay? But this is in general, not the case for most cars. And so what you are doing typically is that you combine the motion, you, uh, I, I, I see my father do it. You kind of move forward and then you start going backwards with, with a certain angle. And this is basically just moving backwards and forwards and rotating at the same time. And therefore, even though you cannot do that, that motion, uh, you can still parallel park otherwise. <laughs> I mean, at least theoretically, you can parallel park. <coughs> now, I, I guess uh, many of you have seen this problem before. It's a, it's a, canonical problem in uh, quotation marks applied differential geometry. But we will make it abstract. And so what we are looking for is for curves in this uh, configuration space for which the derivative, so the, the tangent vector to this curve belongs to a certain sub-bundle of the tangent bundle. In this case, you just have to uh, separate the controls. And so you have here, uh, so, well, okay, basically you have this one that uh, relates to the control U1, namely cosine theta in the first uh, variable and sine theta in the second variable. Uh, and um, the U2, you will just see the derivative with respect to theta or, or the tangent, vector to the S1 factor, okay? The canonical tangent vector. <clears throat> now, um, de, 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 de. this gives an, a very clever example of a differential system. A differential system, uh, different authors call them different in different manners, but okay, differential system. It's a manifold with a distribution. A distribution meaning a sub-bundle of the tangent bundle. Very often I will make the abuse of notation that I will kind of forget that I'm talking about vector fields with values on the distribution. So I, sometimes I will be talking about sections and the bundle indistinguishably. Uh, sorry, um, I, I, usually, I usually write down these things carefully, but I don't talk carefully about this distinction. 
So I, I apologize beforehand. Okay. <clears throat> now the system is called controllable. Okay. Uh, again, uh, motivationally speaking, if any two points in the manifold can be joined by an admissible trajectory, admissible meaning, remember that the derivative is in, uh, uh, belongs to D. Again, do you see the, this is not correctly written, right? It, this should be D evaluated in gamma of T and I should put a T here and I should say almost everywhere T. Um, okay, but a bit more concise, okay? That means admissible, sometimes horizontal, okay? So depending on who you ask. For instance, so we, we, have been, we have been talking about differential geometry here in this conference for quite some time. So I'm not, I don't think if I, if I will offend anyone if I tell you that if you have an involutive distribution, therefore you have a foliation of the manifold, then you will not have a controllable system. Simply because if you have to, if the curve has to lie on one leaf, you cannot jump to different leaves. So it is very easy to construct examples of non-controllable systems. Although, see, generically with respect to the C infinity with topology, completely non-controllable systems are generic. Okay, uh, so anyway. The, 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 there is there there is some work to be done there, but anyway, most systems are uh, satisfied this condition, which we typically call uh, bracket generating or, or controllable, depending on who you talk to. The bracket generating condition is why why is it called like that? Because what you what you do is that you fix a point, you compute in a, you, you, you write down a local basis of the distribution around a small neighborhood around, the, around that point. Uh, and you start computing Lie brackets of these local bases and you evaluate them at the point. And then you get a Lie algebra of sections of D at the point, okay? Uh, when you just compute all, all the brackets, okay? <clears throat> If this is the bracket generating condition, if with enough Lie brackets you get the whole tangent space at every point, then you have controllability. Uh, Cho, that this is the big Mr. Cho, the important algebraic geometer, uh, who wrote down a, I don't know, maybe eight pages paper in uh, Mathematische Annalen in which he proved this using the implicit function theorem. And Paul Rashevsky, uh, okay, Iron Curtain, whatever. We didn't hear about him since, I don't know, maybe the eighties, until the eighties. And uh, in Russia, they didn't know about Cho until the eighties, so, okay. These things happen, but it was more or less at the same time. Uh, interestingly enough, the paper of Rashevsky was in a very obscure journal that, it's not in Dokladi or in the journal, in the Russian journals that, that reached the Western part of the world. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was something like the Annals of the Pedagogical Institute, Liebknecht or something like that. So an example, if you take the car model, if you take the car model uh, and you just compute brackets, you have X, which was, you, you remember, so it was, x dot equals cosine theta u1, y dot equals sine theta u1, and theta dot equals uh, u2. Therefore, you have x, which is cosine theta the, the, in the first variable, the x, and sine theta the y, and uh, associated to u2, it's the vector field y, which is just the theta. And you just compute the Lie bracket, namely, uh, okay, so differentiate here, minus the differentiation back, and you start subtracting, uh, all the second order terms vanish as usual, and you end up with this, okay? Now, 
<laughs> then you have, uh, you, you can write it down as a matrix, right? You just write out first, first coordinate cosine theta, second coordinate uh, sine theta, and zero, then for y you get zero, zero, one, and this ve uh, vector z is uh, sine theta uh, minus cosine theta and zero, and it should be a fairly easy uh, exercise for first year students uh, to see that for all theta, that matrix is uh, non-singular. Therefore, these three vector fields are everywhere linearly independent. So you get the bracket generating condition. And then as a consequence, you can park a car. Okay, that's the, the fairly pr pretty result. <coughs> It's good that you can park a car. You know? It's good to know that mathematically you can park a car, even though practically I cannot. Anyway, the thing is, uh, you, you have after you 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 have these ideas, you know, these general almost differential topological ideas. You are not using metrics. You are not using anything but one uh, five or one vector bundle one sub bundle of the tangent bundle, nothing else. Uh, you can put metrics as usual, you know, we, we, in, in this conference, we really like to use metrics, right? Uh, and uh, the natural way of doing this is just setting a metric only on the distribution, only on D, okay? And you get something called the sub Riemannian manifold. When you have admissible curves, you can compute the length the length in the same way as you compute the length in you know calculus and when you have a bracket generating distribution on a connected manifold then the infimum of that length uh, gives you a proper distance function so this is this becomes a path space and you know you can study a lot of things on path spaces namely Okay, you can go computing uh, geodesics, okay? Or understanding properties of those geodesics. Geodesic meaning finding curves that make that infimum a minimum, okay? Uh, or making it locally, you know? Then you get this uh, fact that in sub Riemannian geometry, the Hamiltonian principles and the Lagrangian principles do not necessarily coincide. They will coincide for um, Riemannian manifolds, but in sub Riemannians, they do not necessarily, it does not happen necessarily. Uh, in fact, you can even write down examples, even three dimensional examples of curves that are geodesics from a Lagrangian point of view. So minimizing that length but not satisfying the, cannot, the correct uh, Hamiltonian system. So that could happen. And there are, as I, as I told you, there are three dimensional examples and they are very simple, okay? Uh, it took some time to, to come up the, with the example, but now that you have written it down, uh, that you have removed all the, I don't know, the dust, uh, it becomes very clear. Um, Anyway, you can get, uh, you can start studying special cases, which will be more or less something that we will discuss today. Uh, going for nilpotent groups, that's a typical case that you do this analysis for the, for the Heisenberg group or for the Engel group, etc. Uh, going around, you know, mapping down uh, metrics from submersions or do, or having group actions and looking at uh, metrics that are orthogonal to the group action, et cetera. So you can just look at special cases that many of them are quite important. Uh, you can even go to measure theory that did happen something really pretty here that uh, all of these things can be infinitesimally approximated by uh, nilpotent groups. And if you look at the growth of the nilpotent group. So, you know, looking at the dimensions of each part of the group and uh, taking into account how many steps you're using in the nilpotent, uh, 
Okay, this is more precise. It's for Carnot groups, right? Anyway, uh, you get uh, that this uh, homogeneous dimension of the group happens to be precisely the um, Hausdorff dimension of this metric space. So for instance, for the Heisenberg group, the Hausdorff dimension using this distance is four, which happens to be the dimension of the Heisenberg group. But if you think about it as nilpotent, as a nilpotent Lie algebra, you just get two parts of step one and one part of step two, and then you get four. Uh, you can do partial differential equations uh, in, the, in this uh, theory up here hypoelliptic operators, which are quite important for the diffusion processes, et cetera. Uh, for these the differential operators, you can do a spectral geometry, et cetera. Uh, on purpose, I, I didn't put here what I'm going to talk about, of course. Why, why would I? Uh, <clears throat> I will go on a bit of a different direction. Not, uh, I will, in general, not use metric and, and unless I have to, what I want to look at are symmetries. Uh, the notion of symmetry is an important uh, construct uh, for geometries. Uh, and you, a natural way of looking at the, at the symmetry in, uh, in the context of uh, differential systems is to look at the feomorphisms that will preserve the distribution. That's fairly reasonable. Uh, so, for instance, if you take, uh, ah, uh, uh, sorry, I have a mental slip, uh, contact distribution, yeah. da, 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 da. contact distribution, yeah, okay, I, I think in Spanish. <laughs> um, if you look at the typical contact distribution on R3, you can see that uh, the Legendre transform will be a symmetry because you can just do the computations that are very, they are very simple, that the Legendre transform preserves the uh, one form, the, the contact one form of the distribution. Okay, just sit down and compute. It's a very simple computation, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> and therefore, uh, here you have an example of a distribution with a non-trivial symmetry. And this is to be expected because you know the Legendre transform <laughs> we, we like it. Okay. Um, anywho, a global description of symmetries is really hard. Okay, it's really, really hard. And so uh, I, I run away from hard mathematics. I, if it works, that's fantastic. But in general, I don't try to do hard mathematics. I like to do easy stuff. And what if the problem is nonlinear and difficult, then you just make it linear. Okay, and how do we make it linear? Okay, so we define infinitesimal symmetries. Namely, I will look at vector fields whose flow give me a symmetry of the, uh, of the differential system, okay? And as a matter of fact, um, <clears throat> I have uh, equivalent descriptions of these infinitesimal symmetries, and the second one is the best. These are, vector fields on the manifold such that when you bracket with sections of the distribution, you remain in the distribution, okay? You can also do it with, with uh, differential forms, with one forms and annihilated. But I, I really like the second one. And so I will use that as a better definition of infinitesimal symmetries. Vector fields, that bracketing preserve the distribution. And you can make a very simple computation. I've, I've been told that in every mathematical talk you should put a proof. So here's a proof. If you take two symmetries and you bracket them, you get the Jacobi identity and therefore the bracket of two symmetries, infinitesimal symmetry, becomes an infinitesimal symmetry by, by simply by Jacobi. So that's great, okay? <coughs> Interestingly enough, you can, you can look at this problem from a you know, strictly analytic point of view and you can get PDEs. So if you take a distribution, so here I have three examples that are 
funny examples. If I take this distribution, which is, uh, as you can see, uh, the foliation of R3 by using horizontal planes, then I get uh, that uh, symmetry, an infinitesimal symmetry of this distribution will simply be that uh, vector field that I don't care about A, I don't care about B, and C as a function, as a smooth function, only depends on Z. Okay, you just sit down and compute with the second definition. If it has to, if the bracket has to remain in gamma in the sections of D, then you just compute and for since you you have to you need to get this equality for all R and S, and therefore this has to be zero and this has to be zero. A very similar, you can do a very similar computation for the contact distribution, which I just wrote down with other coordinates, but it's exactly the same problem. And you end up with another system of PDEs and you can do this one, which is typically called the Martinet distribution uh, or Martinet. And uh, interestingly enough, this is precisely the distribution for which you can compute a very simple example of a geodesic, namely minimizing length that does not have uh, correspond to the Hamiltonian principle associated to the metric in which you just make these vector fields ortho orthonormal. Okay, so really, the, the, after many years, you can write down this in a very beautiful way. Uh, you can see what, what I'm telling you about in uh, memoirs of the AMS by Hector Sussman and, uh, oh, Liu. I don't remember the name, the first name. Uh, originally, the, the proof is by Richard Montgomery, but it was really involved. Uh, and nowadays, we have a much better description. <clears throat> now, the, 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 this is the historical part. The historical part is that uh, Elie Cartan, in a so Cartan father, uh, in 1910, uh, wrote down um, wrote down a a very long paper, which is really famous, in which uh, he was studying. Uh, partial differential equations of second degree on manifolds of dimension five. And he tried to look for um, invariance for this called uh, PFAF systems, which is just a distribution seen as with you know, differential forms and um, looking for um, the, this idea of looking of searching for invariance of equivalent distributions, but that, that's the main problem. You want to see whether two differential systems are equivalent, okay? It, that's really, really very hard. And so Cartan wanted to find a function that would distinguish two differential systems of rank two inside uh, over, better, over a uh, manifold of dimension five. He created a degree four tensor. It was really hard. Uh, but it has a, okay, I, that's the Pfaffian system. Okay, but anyway, all the systems in involution admit a group with 14 parameters, okay? Uh, no, all the, all the systems in involution admitting, sorry, admitting a group with 14 parameters, uh, Per, belong to the same class and are reducible to this system, okay? Anywho, what do they mean? What does he mean by equivalent distributions? You get a local diffeomorphism between the manifold. Well, okay, let's say the same manifold. You can just make small enough neighborhoods that everything is, you know, R5 in, this, in the Carton case, and uh, that map one distribution to the other. That's it. And <coughs> um, the flat case, so the case in which this invariant vanishes is called the flat Cartan distribution. It's 
and it corresponds locally to the unique Lie algebra with growth vector 235. It's a free nilpotent Lie algebra, okay? And the Lie algebra of symmetries of this flat Cartan distribution, it's precisely the Lie algebra G2, this exceptional Lie algebra G2, which uh, Cartan really liked. He found several descriptions of this Lie algebra. And uh, this is one of the, one of the good ones. And uh, moreover, he proved that it was maximal. In every other case, the Lie algebra of symmetries was going to be less or equal in dimensionally speaking, less or equal than 14, which is the dimension of G2. Okay, then we go in this area. So you have this G2 that has this growth vector, namely you have uh, two generators, then the bracket is linearly independent. And then the bracket between the first bracket and the two original vectors is, are linearly independent. That's why you get a five because you get two vectors more. <clears throat> now you can look at it at this more generally. You just take a graded nilpotent Lie algebra. Okay, so when you bracket two of these of these summons, you go to the summon of the sum. Why do I uh, use the negative uh, negative indices? Because of uh, historical reasons. These the, the person that, this, this, that did this work was Tanaka and he used it and I, uh, he, he, I, I, I never met him. I've met several of his students, but they, they just say, just put them negatively. Uh, <laughs> and <clears throat> so you just take a graded nilpotent algebra. So you're grading it using the bracket. This is, these are not all the nilpotent Lie algebras, but these are fairly common when you look at uh, this um, sub-Riemannian world, okay? <coughs> and for these uh, objects, you can give a purely algebraic answer to the question of, uh, describing or, or describing symmetry, better to say, bounding symmetries. Okay, so the examples are the classical ones here: are Heisenberg, Cartan, uh, Engel. They again. So uh, in the Heisenberg, well, Heisenberg is well known. The Engel, it's just adding one more, which corresponds to one more bracket. And uh, Carton is adding both brackets in uh, of, of second, well, of, with second bracket, so in step three. <coughs> and the, the object that Tanaka created uh, was, you know, take this uh, negative part of the algebra and start adding terms, okay, on the positive side. Uh, so you just, you prolong it. That's the name, Tanaka prolongation. And so you just start adding extra factors, get a Lie algebra. And the fact is that there is only one prolongation that will satisfy a couple of technical conditions, okay? Well, one is technical, the other one is rather reasonable. So. The, 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 the first, I mean, the, 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 the first terms will coincide with your original Lie algebra. This, uh, you know, uh, the transitivity, it's a algebraic way of looking at transitivity with group actions, okay? So it's related to the fact that uh, the groups associated are transitive. This was uh, figured out by Gilliman and Sternberg in the 60s. Okay, writing down this condition in a very explicit way. Actually, they did the first notion of prolongation as far as I know. Um, and you ask for maximality. Of course, the maximality ensures that this object is unique, okay? And moreover, uh, which really helps, and uh, there is an explicit description of this, okay? In which you just, basically you just start adding factors, okay, 
uh, morphisms from NP to NP plus K. And you start adding factors and you make sure, of course, that you get, uh, well, okay, so that U is a derivation in a certain sense, but more the fact that you ask for this map to be a derivation amounts to the Jacobi identity on this big algebra. Something wonderful about this explicit description is that it can be programmed. I do not know if it is implemented in Sage, but I do know it is implemented in uh, Maple. Okay, so you can even write down vector fields on in Maple, and then you there is a package called differential geometry or something like that. You open the, the package of differential geometry, and then you Tanaka prolongation. It's 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 good. <laughs> Uh, the zeroth factor, which happens to be quite, quite interesting, it just uh, refers to the degree preserving derivations, okay? And, uh, okay, it's something, something good about the N0 is that already just adding the N0 part uh, becomes a, a prolongation in the, in the strict sense. It becomes, you just, you just take this and then you add this factor and uh, it will continue being LEL, right? It will not be nil potent anymore, of course. Uh, but even this factor is already a subalgebra, okay? And uh, I will, in, in a short moment, show some results that I've got about this. Uh, okay. <clears throat> why, why, Wh why would you define this? <laughs> Uh, the, the reason to define this, it's this really beautiful theorem by Tanaka. It's uh, from 1970, 7 zero. Uh, and the theorem says that, okay, so that there are some very small technicalities. Uh, let, let me spend one minute saying that. This is a new potent group. Uh, the important Lie algebra and your potent Lie algebra. Well, okay, every Lie algebra, and I think you hear for the moment real, okay, uh, has a unique connected and simply connected Lie group that has that Lie algebra as the Lie algebra of the Lie group. For Neil potent group, for Neil potent algebras, that unique, okay, unique up to uh, that unique group. It has no topologies, diffeomorphic to Rn. The exponential map for an important is a diffeomorphism. And so you can look with the Lie algebra to that Lie group. You can even write down exp the explicit form of the product on the group because of the Baker Campbell Hauser formula. And the n minus one factor, you just trans the left translated to the whole group and then you get a distribution. So you get naturally given a nilpotent Lie algebra, okay, greater than nilpotent Lie algebra, you get a differential system in which the manifold is the Lie group and the distribution is the translation of the minus one part. So the, the distribution, Mauricio, is left invariant, right? Yes. That, that's what you mean, yes. okay. Oh, you, you, you can make it right invariant, but it has to be some, <laughs> choose your favorite hand invariant, okay? It's the translation. I, I'm not saying which one because it will be the same result after. And now, the dimensions of the symmetry, the dimension of the symmetries of this distribution or, or of this differential system, better to say, uh, is finite if and only if the dimension of the prolongation is if the prolongation is finite, meaning if this process eventually ends, it becomes just zero, okay? And interestingly enough, both. Mauricio. Yes. May I ask you something? Of course, uh, yes. The last page, I mean, when you that define one? This, this Tanaka prolongation, mm -hmm. U is a, is a map. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the map of this vector space is not in this vector space. 
It's a map on that vector space satisfying a, a linear map, of course, uh, satisfying this. And then you define the bracket okay. for these maps. And since you are asking this uh, condition, yeah. then these maps will satisfy the Jacobi identity. So it's, it, it, you know, it's really very clever. And it's, uh, I, I really like saying this. I really like saying this, sorry. But it's just linear algebra. You know, linear algebra can be really very hard. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, um, both the cases in which the dimension is finite and in which the dimension is infinite, they are both interesting, okay? And when the dimension is infinite, then you can, you know, hope to see that you have infinite dimensional symmetry spaces and then you can try, you can pray to your favorite gods that you eventually get some kind of deformation theory. Okay, so on the Heisenberg group, you can do uh, quasi-conformal maps, etc. that you, you eventually can deform symmetries. You have a lot of contact vector fields. And so you can, you know, do very serious deformation analysis. When the, when the cases are rigid, you have very small uh, finite dimensional symmetry uh, groups, and then you can try to find them. Okay, it's a problem, in, and now it becomes a problem of Lie group theory. <coughs> with uh, with some friends, uh, with group of co-authors, we actually proved. I will not go into this in much detail. Uh, we actually saw that the in the step two case uh, for very for very simple uh, restrictions. Uh, Meaning that you know it's the by degree called the by degree the dimension of the minus two part and the dimension of the minus one part uh, bigger or equal than three then generically meaning in, in this case generic you know generic means a lot of things generically meaning um, with uh, it's a Sariski open set of uh, an algebraic variety uh, generically they are rigid okay. But this is only in step two. For step three, we have no idea. Okay, I guess not. But anyway, on step two, it, it, it works. Generically, they are rigid. <coughs> the point is that in step two, this was already mentioned yesterday. There is no Jacobi identity. The Jacobi identity is completely trivial. Just do two, two, twice the bracket and then it's just zero. So the Jacobi identity will be very simple. And so basically you just, you just get a combinatorial number there, okay? But uh, when you go to step three, it becomes much harder. Much harder because you have to be careful with the Jacobi identity. And so here it's a list of results that I've got with, my, with one of my PhD students in which at least, at least you can describe this N zero. Oh, I forgot the, the little hat, okay. Um, okay. Uh, you can describe uh, the N0. We have a full description, okay, for, okay, you can do all of these systems uh, using parabolic tools, main, namely uh, choosing roots in an appropriate way. Uh, and we have a full description of the N0 part for AN, which is very large. It's very long to write down, but you have it for B, okay? Uh, wait, 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 wait. wait. You have it for B, you have it for C, you have it for D. Even the exceptional ones, E6 and E7 are also very long. But anyway, you can describe explicitly N0 happens to be a reductively algebra and as a reductively algebra, we can detect combinatorially what is the center and what is the semi-simple, the, the simple part, et cetera. So, and it, this is, purely combinatorially. This is just looking at the Dinkin diagram and uh, it would works beautifully. Now, so, the, yes, yes. So this rigidity is a property of the grading, right? Because in, from in three principle, step, yes. yes. From three step and above, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there are nilpotent Lie algebras with two different gradings, non-equivalent. Exactly, yeah, it, it could happen. Jorge, I have, I have not computed them. 
Okay, I know that there, there are these examples. They, they are not that difficult, right? Uh, but I have not computed the prolongations of these. Uh, it, it, it would be, you know, I, I could just put it in the computer. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a very good question, but in principle, yes. This is related so, to the grading. Uh, do you think is it possible to have two rigid in this for the same? I, I have no that's idea. Did, did, that's a really good question. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay but um, yeah, it's it's a good, really good question. I haven't thought about it. But uh, what I, what I assure you is that the grading, I mean, the prolongation, it's related to the grading. To the grading, you you have to have a specific grading. Different gradings should give you different things. What about rigidity? I don't know. I will think about it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It was very good observation. <clears throat> now the rolling problem. Why do I want to talk about the rolling problem? Because I really like the rolling problem first. And uh, second, you know, the, the, the first part was kind of a purely algebraic description. This is using symmetries to obtain a very cool result. This already has some years. Uh, it becomes technical. I will try to skip the technical part, but uh, first let me motivate and then I will even go back to the result of Cartan. Uh, when you want to roll a ball on the plane, this is a, again, a famous uh, geometric control theory example. Uh, you get a five dimensional uh, configuration space and you have two controls. Therefore, immediately it's harder than the, than the car, not because of the dimension five, but because of the co-dimension. In the car, you had co-dimension one, and that's wonderful, okay? Basically, all the contact manifolds that you can, that you can imagine, uh, they are all of co-dimension one for, the, in this, for this point of view, and they all share uh, a lot of uh, simil similarities because of, you know, that boo, whatever, okay? But when you grow in co-dimension, you grow in complexity. This problem has co-dimension three, and therefore you have to start doing more brackets. When you have to do more brackets, it becomes harder, okay? In this case, you can write down everything with matrices. Again, you separate the U part from the V part, and then you get the vector fields with the U part and the V part, and then you just bracket matrices because this is a invariant, an invariant uh, system on a control system on a Lie group because it's R2 times SO3. And uh, you can just do brackets of matrices and it works, okay? Um, also, the same way that you can park a car, you can actually roll a ball. So you can see the controllability by looking at uh, coming up with slips and coming up with twists, okay? The control system is assuming that you cannot slip. So basically, if you change from one position to the other, it's because you actually rolled, you didn't slide, and also, if you rotate, it's because you're moving. So you cannot just rotate around your, active, around your axis. Twists are forbidden. These are the forbidden uh, motions that give rise to, to, the, to the system before. You can do it explicitly. I thank a very good friend of mine, Fatima Silva Leite from Portugal that gave me these pictures. Um, and uh, we wrote down the control system. It was back in my PhD. And even we were able to establish that no slip plus no twist amounts to solving that differential equation. Okay, that's control system. And this control system gives you a distribution, a precise form of the distribution. We have explicit vector fields, an explicit basis that you can sit down and do the brackets. It's horrible, okay? but it's uh, doable. Some friends of mine that all are also co-authors found a more involved way, but they can get better formulas for the brackets, okay? In which you kind of like do parallel transport, then apply an isometry, then go back on the parallel transport, transport and then you are kind of lifting 
the vector fields on one of the manifold that is rolling to the configuration space, okay? It's much more difficult, but you can do uh, better tensorial computations, okay? <clears throat> Here is a description of the, of the brackets, appears this term called the rolling curvature, they called it rolling curvature. And uh, why did they call it rolling curvature? Uh, because you have a description of the involutive uh, distribution in terms of the vanishing of the rolling curvature. And, this, and a complete vanishing of this curvature amounts to the fact that M and M have, have exactly the same constant sanctional curvature. Um, so for instance, two spheres of radius I don't know, three, that is of course, if they are rolling one on the other, that is of course a non-controllable system because you know you just put a mirror and you have to preserve the specularity if they are rotating in this non-slipping and no-twisting way. So you can, if you start with, you know, put the, put the Arnold cat in one of the balls, put the Arnold cat in, in the other ball. And if you want to, you know, just keep the Arnold cat, the picture in this one, and then you want to twist this one there, you will not be able to do it because if they start like this, they will continue in the dynamics being uh, specular images of each other, okay? If the sphere is of radius two and three, then, it, then, it's, then it's okay. Um, <clears throat> This is a bit more sophisticated. Uh, we needed a better tensor uh, to, to make computations. Uh, this is an endomorphism of the second wedge. And this new uh, rolling curvature, this normalized rolling curvature uh, happened to give an answer to the controllability question of the, of the rolling problem. But this becomes much harder, okay? Checking invertibility, it's not an easy thing to do. For constant curvature spaces of different uh, radii, uh, then it will work. Okay, and so okay, look at constant curvature spaces, uh, and uh, it happens that projecting to the first coordinate of the configuration space becomes a principal bundle. That group in red is weird, but we can describe it. Okay. These are the standard, I mean, in principle is weird. Okay, that's the, the holonomy group of the, of, the, of the bundle. And uh, you can describe it exactly according to the signs. It's what is to be expected. <coughs> and then we can, you know, since we have a principal bundle, you can look at the, the corresponding uh, connection, okay? This connection for the principal bundle that depends on which curvature you're using, of course, uh, you can look at the holonomy of that uh, of that connection. And for instance, uh, if one of the factors has constant curvature, you get controllability if the holonomy of the uh, of that like, explicit right uh, connection becomes one of these groups. If you get short, uh, smaller holonomy, then you don't get controllability. What's the group S E of N? Uh, the special Euclidean group. Uh, so it's uh, isometries of R N, translations and rotations. Okay, thanks. Okay. Preserving isometries. Yeah, pre uh, orientation. Preserving, yeah. Uh, preserving orientation. Yeah, because you're you're looking at holonomy, so. Uh, you just take the connection component of the identity. It's the same here. So in, in this one, you, you get, uh, I think, four components. So take the connected component of the identity. Um, well, <coughs> for uh, zero, then you get full controllable, even only if you have full Riemannian holonomy. Uh, for spheres, we have some kind of results. We did uh, in a, on a different paper, the case of the odd dimensional case, the odd dimensional case becomes studying special holonomies of manifolds. So we get a case for Sasakian, a case for uh, quaternionic, uh, for hyperkeller, etc. So we had to go through the 
uh, important holonomy groups. It was really, really a lot of fun. Um, and uh, we don't have a full list because we have bigger or equal than 16, but we kind of forgot about it. <laughs> but for the hyperbolic space, we even have a precise description in terms of uh, warped products, okay? So it is controllable whenever it's not one of these two warp trial cases, okay? Anyway, that's becoming a bit, a bit too technical. Remember that's the symmetries, I'm, I'm, close to, I'm close to the end. And you can look at inner symmetries. The inner symmetries are those symmetries that are also sections of D, okay? Um, if you have inner non-trivial inner symmetries, then immediately it's not rigid. The, the, the system is not rigid. That's a general fact. <coughs> in fact, in the for the Heisenberg group for the contact distribution, uh, the inner symmetries are trivial, but it's still not uh, rigid. So it's not an it's not a sufficient it's not a necessary condition. Okay, it's not an equivalence, but it's enough. Having one inner symmetry implies that you get uh, non rigidity. Carton, in that paper in 1910, proved that the symmetries of the flat Carton distribution is T2 and it's maximal. And in fact, a rewriting of this, which is, you know, has been explained very beautifully by Bryant, is that whenever you're rolling two spheres, two two dimensional spheres, uh, look at the rolling distribution and the symmetry is either G2, precisely when the ratio of the radii is one third or three, okay. choose the smaller one. And otherwise it is SO3 times SO3. In this case, when the ratio of the radii is one third, it happens exactly that the rolling distribution becomes the flat Cartan. And in all the others, you just get the trivial one, basically, rotating one sphere and rotating the other one independently as symmetries of the system. So you can give a, for, for special cases, you can look at, uh, okay, so I will, okay. In general, this is not flat. Uh, we don't know much about the symmetries of the, of the rolling distribution, even now with this, you know, six years ago, we proved that it was not flat, but we still don't know much. <coughs> and, Anyway, this is the last slide. Uh, afterwards, is thank you, okay? Um, if you look at the symmetries, that the projection on the first factor, that are in the kernel of the projection of the first factor, those symmetries will detect the, I, the, the that Lie algebra of symmetries will detect the Lie algebra of isometries of, m hat of the first factor, okay? <clears throat> Whenever there is some genericity, you see there is an open dense set in which the rolling curvature is inverting, okay? Given some genericity condition, which can be read precisely in our paper, the symmetries that lie in the kernel of the projection would see the isometries of the other factor. Therefore, you get a principal bundle structure projecting to the first coordinate precisely when you have, the, we heard about this, the, 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 this result yesterday, right? When you can get enough killing vector fields, right? Okay, when you can detect all the isometries, which happens precisely when you are in a space of constant sectional curvature. So using symmetries, we can even find this very involved way of characterizing uh, constant, constant curvature spaces. But look, the genericity condition before the implication, it's basically a controllability condition on the rolling problem. So if you, Morally speaking, if you have a fully controllable rolling problem, uh, generically, it will, it will have relation to the fact that one of the factors of the rolling, it's actually kind of pretty. 
okay? So pretty that it will have constant sectional cavity. And that's it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, um, Mauricio. Um, we now have some time for questions or remarks. Um, so um, please unmute yourself and reveal yourselves if you want to. <laughs> uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we can. Uh, yeah, uh, I have the impression that when you, you're talking about Z, you're thinking of a subbundle with a well-defined dimension, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Is there work? Is there work on non-constant uh, uh, ranks of bundles? Uh, there is some work because actually those kind of things happen in uh, you know important control problems. Um, I don't know right now of. Uh, specific symmetries about this. Anyway, anyway, I mean, you can, ta, 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 ta. I, I will go almost at the beginning uh, because, uh, you know, there, there is always someone that asks about these weirder cases. <laughs> this, in this distribution precisely happens what, you, what you're talking about, right? Yeah. If you do the yeah. bracket. Uh, it's a zero, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. You will have a problem on the plane x equals zero, right? On the plane y is z. Y is z. Uh, so you can write down the symmetries. Okay. You can write it down. A, a, a different problem is studying rigidity and so on. I don't know right now because usually something that we call in the, in the area, we call it equiregularity, namely that the dimensions of the of the factors is always the same. But the point is that you have to do, uh, typically when you're, when you're doing infinitesimal analysis, uh, not local, this is, this is a bad thing. But when you're doing this approximation, this nil potent approximations, you, you just go point by point. And so eventually you could just change the algebra of symmetries from point to point. Okay, that could eventually happen. Uh, excuse me, you mean in the sense of a, an algebra, for example? In, in the sense of an algebra, right. The, the, this, this Lie algebra, uh, you know, I, 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 I told you, I'm uh, abusing notation, right? Um, it, it could happen that it, this will depend on the point. This I, could see, I see, I see, I yes. see. Okay. Uh, and another question, I mean, uh, well, what if we, th if we think of the inverse problem, like we have a foliation, mm -hmm. and from that foliation, we get a distribution related to this foliation. Mm -hmm. uh, due to your condition on involutibility, mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems to me that we need the first foliation to be locally homogeneous, right? Because if we have yes. only algebra, I see, yes. I see, no, perfect. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he, here I am, okay, I'm you know, throwing under the rug uh, some technical details. Not every foliation will work, of course. You, know, you, you have to be careful. I'm, yes, you're right. <laughs> well, thanks. Okay, I, I don't know if there are more questions. We have one question by Emil in the chat. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm reading it. Um, so, for uh, okay, I will I will tell you what I know, not what I don't know. For instance, uh, when I talked about this part here, okay, um, let let me be a bit, a bit more precise. You take a complex simple Lie algebra. Um, <clears throat> so you have the list of simple Lie algebras, and uh, Choosing appropriate roots, so you just look at uh, at the what's the name of the maximal the maximal root. Okay, so you can take subsets of the roots. You look at the weights that these algebras have on the maximal root, and this will give you a, a graded nilpotent Lie algebra in a very clever way. Maybe maybe I can maybe I can you know do do an example. 
I can probably do an example. Okay, here, here I have some. Okay, here I have some space. Um, did, 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 oh, okay. The, 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 the tablet turned off, of course. Uh, did, 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 give me a second. So, for instance, if you take uh, SL2, uh, not, not SL2, if you take SLN, okay, it doesn't matter, or probably SL plus one. SLM plus one. Uh, you have M, time, M plus one times M plus one matrices of trace zero. And the uh, corresponding uh, type of Lie algebra is AN. So you have the Dinkin diagram, which is the simplest thing ever, right? And the maximal root is alpha one plus alpha two, ta -ta 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 -ta, plus alpha N, right? So if you take a subset of roots, let's say you take uh, alpha one, alpha three, and alpha four, okay? Let's say n equals five. So you're looking at SL six. Uh, you will grade, so here's one, two, here you draw a vertical, a three, here is a four, as I told you, you can do it very combinatorially concrete. Then five and six are at the end, right? And then you see here one, three, and four. Okay. One, three, and four. And then uh, maybe I can use this and I can use another color. This here. So that block inside SLN will be a ta, 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 the n minus one part of a grading. Then this part, uh, let's say pink here, will be the n minus two, and another color, uh, green, dark green, that will be n minus three. So are you describing the nil radicals of parabolic savannah? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. This is this is, you know, the standard the, the, the standard tools in parabolic geometry. If you take this nil graded nil potent Lie algebra n minus la, 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 the Tanaka prolongation of this is S L N plus one graded in this way. This part here is n zero. This part here is n1, this is n2, this is n3. Of course, the, this has nothing to do with complex numbers, except for the, you know, the choices of roots. This goes through the compact forms of this algebra. So if you go to the real world and then you see SU, uh, M plus one, which would be the real, the, the real compact form of this, uh, of this Lie algebra, this complex Lie algebra, you will also see this, this decomposition. So, uh, and, and then as you can see, for these cases, you have a complete knowledge of the symmetries. Okay, they are rigid and you can see them here. Okay, Mauricio, but this distribution is very, very particular. I, I know, am... I know, I know. No, I, I mean, there general... are two dimensionals for in, okay. in, a, in any semi-simple Lie algebra, there are two dimensional brackets in writing. Yes, uh, for, for, I mean, for what, what I'm saying is that for this one, we have a full knowledge. Ah, okay, 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 okay. right. For the other ones, we can get some, you know, bounds sometimes. Uh, I'm not sure right now which kind of bounds we can find, but I, I think I've seen that. Uh, but yeah, for for this this is a hard problem. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. If you want to have a full but, knowledge, but it reduced to, to a it yes? reduced to a Lie theoretical problem, right? Yes. Okay. And okay. So in principle, just linear algebra. Okay. Okay. So if, if you can, you know, do the nilpotent approximation and throw it to Maple, in principle, okay? But uh, 
you know, you just get bounced. Knowing full symmetries, uh, it's uh, difficult. It was a good thing that the that for the Heisenberg group you get well, okay, any contact uh, you get the jet spaces, okay. So you can describe them very precisely, but in general, uh, not not easy. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, someone else. By the way, that, that's the way that we can produce this and zero. <clears throat> well, if there are no more questions, then we thank uh, Mauricio again. I will stop sharing. Okay. Thank you very much. Will, thank you to you. I will clap. Uh, with the reaction clip. <laughs> I will Very also good. stop the recording and then we can stay here if you want. Yeah.